What one area, above all else, would be your unique focus while in office? Please, you know. Well, you know, our district is extremely diverse. Environmentally, uh, geographically, uh, just every, everything is so diverse in the district. It's most important in the city, in my opinion. What would my focus be? I'd say, as opposed to the infrastructure issues, which are, you know, I don't want to get into that. That's a huge focus. But besides that, you know, Midtown is a big issue. I lived in Midtown. I worked in Midtown. And there are a lot of issues with poverty, crime, housing, uh, schools. So really, Midtown is a huge focus for me. What specific one policy, program, or investment would you champion and try to get done in your first year? I just want to focus on, seriously, job training. So it goes back to educationally. I want to work on job training and getting that for the people so that they can get good, high-paying jobs. So, you know, you hear a lot of talk about, and with the New Deal and all, $15 minimum wage. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't have to be a discussion of a minimum wage for the money you could be earning if you had job training for some of these construction jobs. So I am in the housing sector. And truly, you know, these salaries can go up to $50 to $100 an hour for skilled trades. And I think that's a huge focus. Is, you know, let's throw 15 out the window. You could get a lot higher than that with literally less than a year of training if you're into electrical, carpentry, plumbing. I mean, it's a really special time right now in our city in that there are still huge issues, but there's so much more opportunity than there ever was before. You know, growing up, I remember driving through 34th Street, 22nd Avenue South, the same buildings being boarded up literally for over a decade. And then whenever anything opened up, you'd go, whoa, you know, you, you weren't used to ever seeing new businesses open mm -hmm. in South St. Pete, just ever. Um, so now there are opportunities for that. And I think that job training is going to be a big, big thing that can really lift people out of poverty and get them good wages and end generational poverty. Okay, now clarific clarification. So you're representing a district that's what, uh, approximately 37 percent black electorate, right? So um, your answer seems to be tailored to the, the majority black portion of your district. Step back from that and tell us what one policy program or investment overall you would champion. So not tailoring your answer to the black community. You know, I'll be honest, it's not so much about tailoring. And I love downtown St. Pete. I go downtown St. Pete all the time. I eat downtown. I go to the bars. They're going to be all right. You know, downtown is downtown and it's going to do well. And I really think you need to take a step back and look at the areas that need the most help because if we get a bad reputation for any part of our city, be it environmentally through sewage issues or crime or poverty, it's going to drag everybody down and downtown is actually going to sink back. Right now, downtown is firing on all cylinders. Mm -hmm. It is. So it doesn't really need much help other than watching the building. But that's what I'm getting at is all of these building projects. Let me give you a good example. I rented a townhouse out to a guy and he said, oh, I'm going to have a couple workers come in. He brought a whole crew in from, I believe, Kentucky. And these were all people just bust in. Mm -hmm. They lived there for six months, did work on the downtown building, and then they got out. So they're just extracting money from the community. They don't live here. They don't know anything about St. Pete. They take all the money out and they go back. Why is this not helping out people from the neighborhood? So, you know, I can't afford these condos downtown myself, but the people who are being displaced by them, at least give them some money and a job to fix the place up if you can't, you know, enjoy it anyway. There has to be some benefit to the community. Mm -hmm. And that ties back in with your education. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I went to college and I got a Bright Future scholarship. That was great. I enjoyed my time in college. I'm not going to say the college isn't important, but, you know, boy, it would be good to have some more real life skills as opposed to, you know, learning about you know, European history. Because mm -hmm. I don't think European history is going to make you a lot of money in the St. Pete market today. How will you build relationships and bridges between downtown and midtown? Geographically, I mean, they're next to each other, right? Mm -hmm. So, but there is a huge divide. I mean, you know, 16th Street, people start getting, you know, nervous when you're passing the trot. That's... Who gets nervous when you're passing the trot? Well, when you see people from games, always say, well, I took a wrong turn, you know, this, that, the other. 16th Street is set up is such a wonderful commercial corridor. And so is 22nd, but 22nd gets all the, 
attention, right? Mm -hmm. 16th is a great street. I mean, I drive down there because I live on 17th Street. 16th Street, if you look at that, it's set up perfectly for small business. And of course, you know, you'd have to look at the ownership of the different places, the old Salem's, you know, the old banks. There's a lot of abandoned buildings there, mm -hmm. but it's set up like a miniature downtown. And it could be, you know, the community's hub. I mean, 22nd, it's good that there's some works have been done there, but 16th, you could really sandwich that whole pocket of Midtown between commercial quarter, commercial corridor, and they could be community-based and community-owned. So small businesses in the community, they're basically non-existent right now. I mean, there are some good, shining examples, but we need more small businesses that are run by the people from the community. For economic wealth for the community, that's excellent, but also, you know, to preserve the character, I mean, People talk these days in tourism about how getting rid of old properties, tearing things down, it's not helping anybody, you know, A, preserve the character and, and, and the history and the stories of that community, but B, nobody wants to see the same thing everywhere. So, you know, you have a mix of new housing, old housing, renovated housing. It shows different boom periods and represents the history visually uh, of the people. So let me, let me cut back to, for a minute to small businesses. So that's great to say, you know, Woohoo, small businesses for the neighborhood. Everybody says that, you know, what's the point there? But there really is another great opportunity here that I don't think people are really touching on is the USF uh, uh, Graduate Business School. Mm -hmm. So that has now pushed USF's campus footprint further south mm -hmm. on 4th Street to 11th Avenue. That is a top notch facility. I mean, I took a tour of it, it blew my mind, all the technology. They said they had, I think, $3 million in video technology mm -hmm. for interviewing skills for jobs. Mm -hmm. It's already literally in the community. It's in the south side. So recruit local uh, members of the community who have an interest in business, get them job training through there or entrepreneur, entrepreneurial training mm -hmm. and set them up with small businesses. Match that with matching grants from the city, small uh, business loan forgiveness, and have people open up their own businesses if they're interested. Mm -hmm. So how do you um, build those relationships between the two areas? Marketing and recruitment. I mean, of of the business school, uh -huh. but how do you branch the two? Well, the thing is there's money downtown, so you know, money talks. If you have a business and you're doing the right things, people will come to you. I mean, also, downtown is, it's overbuilt. There's no place to go unless you tear something down. So let me give you a good instance. If I live in a condo downtown and I think I'm in my little bubble, well, where am I gonna go and buy sheets or a pillow? There's no Target anywhere nearby. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of vacant storefront on Midtown. So out of necessity, you can bring people and money into the neighborhoods just because, hey, the proximity to downtown, you know, shopping a business there. Because mm -hmm. they got nowhere else to go. I mean, literally, there's nothing but small storefronts mm -hmm. that can't accommodate, you know, home goods, for instance. Which current council member do you respect most and why? Well, I don't, I don't want to be cliche, so that's why I, I took a pause, but I really do uh, respect Councilman Nurse, and I'd say the reason I respect him so much is because he says what he thinks is right, regardless of the repercussions. So I'm a Kona rep for Coquina Key, and I saw him come in to the last Kona meeting last month, Council of Neighbor Associations, and he championed a proposal to have uh, bus shelters so there's not enough money for the bus shelters from the PSTA. There's not enough money to build them right now. He championed a proposal to put a sign, a, 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 an advertisement, on the side of the bus shelter, and a private company would pay to build them. And it was like he said, the worst thing in the world. I mean, people were going nuts and saying, you know, this is literally a woman was saying, this is wrong, Carl. Your whole legacy is ruined. We'll never forgive you for this. I mean, we're talking about a bus terminal here, right? You know, a little a little station to keep people out of the rain. Mm -hmm. uh, point being, he thought it was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's, he's out there still firing all cylinders right before his term is up. Um, you know, consequences be damned. He's saying what's on his mind, and I really respect that. Mm -hmm. okay. How do you feel about him uh, endorsing Gina? Well, I'm certainly not all for it. <laughs> 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 I think he may have made a mistake, but, uh, you know. Hey, he spoke his mind. And seriously, that's the thing. He spoke his mind. <laughs> That'll make the better show. Okay. Which mayoral candidate will you vote for? Well, I got in a lot of heat already because the Times mentioned that I said I liked Baker. Mm -hmm. um, truth being, I've met uh, Christman. 
Mayor Priceman. I've, I've met Mayor Baker. Mayor Baker has given me a lot of advice uh, and has also encouraged me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because hey, it's I'm a first time candidate. It is, you know, a battlefield out there, and you know, it, it, it makes you feel better when somebody stands up and tells you, hey, keep fighting. Mm -hmm. The main thing I will say, you know, they both have, have points where they can improve. Uh, you know, of course, uh, Mayor Baker's um, gotten slammed for, for some views of the LGBT community, uh, mm -hmm. but I, I think he's moved on beyond that and has progressed. The true thing I really like about Mayor Baker is that he is a history buff. Mm -hmm. So he wrote a book of history about the city of St. Pete. Mm -hmm. This may sound lame, but I researched the old Evening Independence, the Times, back to 1908, 1909, you can find articles on the internet. It is so fascinating, the history you can find of our city online. And Mayor Baker really, really, really appreciates the history of our city and the causation for why we are where we are today. Mm -hmm. So he knows the players, he knows the game, and I really respect somebody who is a history buff of our city and follows the past. Okay, speaking of history, how would you rate your knowledge on a scale of 1 to 10? How would you rate your knowledge of the black community and its history here in St. Petersburg? Well, gee, I don't want to say something and then get burned for it later, but uh, I'd say it's, it's certainly better than the average guy off the street. Okay, so you don't want to rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10? 1 to 10, or 8, let's give, let's give it a 6 and a half, 7. 6 and a half or 7? Wow, okay. So that's a pretty high score yeah. you're giving yourself. <laughs> you know there's a trivia segment of this later, right? Well, I, I, I can't <laughs> wait to knock him dead. Okay. And what, what was your major? Political science. Okay. All right. So then um, what do you say is the most, uh, name three of the most influential or tide turning events in the history of the black community? The, okay. Well, obviously, uh, uh, um, you've got the Tyron Lewis incident. That was a big deal. Okay. When was that? I believe that was 96, maybe 95, okay. if I'm wrong, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, another huge incident, and I'm not going to know the years, so don't kill me on this <laughs> one, but somewhere between 1908 and 1913, uh, when they raided the jail and, and hung, I, I don't remember his name, okay. but hung the man mm -hmm. uh, who was accused of... Um, John Evans, I think his name was. A crime that he did not do, and they, they, they lynched him in public. I mean, that mm -hmm. was a turning point what for else? sure. Um, what is the biggest financial waste you've know, identified I, I in city say government? This is even so much a single point, but something that always fascinated me is is tying back into that is Peppertown and how that was for years. You can read letters to the editor on the internet, and I read them from the 1930s, mm -hmm. saying you know Peppertown is supposed to be fixed up by now. What the heck's going on? Mm -hmm. These houses are, are vacant. Let's let's bulldoze them. You know, this is in the 1930s. I, I, I found out all about all that because there was a letter to the editor from a, 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 a building that I had renovated, and the owner was complaining mm -hmm. about the proximity and how it was affecting her property value. Mm -hmm. And this is in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there have been, obviously, racial issues for years in the city. And, you know, Peppertown to what's now downtown, it's been all engulfed and is now condos. Mm -hmm. okay. But um, I'd say just all of Peppertown. Let me stay with this line for just a hot second here. So give us the parallel. What do you say are the most uh, important or tide turning events in the history of the city's white community? I don't know the tides ever really turned. I mean, you know, I think that things have been... I mean, St. Pete is, is kind of a bubble, and I think that things have always been skewed, you know, mm -hmm. in favor of the white community. I wouldn't say there's been a tide-turning event. I okay. mean, truly, there has always been a dichotomy. Well, monumental event, then, or just important. Three big things in St. Pete's history. They're good for the white community. I, I, everything just St. Pete's history. Oh, okay. well, well, history, I mean... Obviously, when, when it was incorporated, so 1888, okay. uh, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say that the first housing boom in the, in the early teens, late, late like 09 to 13, 14, that was important, obviously. Mm -hmm. That was the original housing boom. Then the 20s, when the conversion of all the old you know, houses into boarding houses, and that's when tourism really kicked up in the city. Mm -hmm. So the 19, 1920s is probably the most influential period uh, in the city's history in terms of bringing people here because... You know, there was not much development. The population was, what, 10,000, 15,000 from the 1800s to the 1920s. Then it exploded. Um, then the 1950s, so 
-hmm. after the war uh, when all of the ranch style houses were built in the late 50s and 56 57 that was when the city basically went on the map mm -hmm. so the tourism was really hot uh, that's when the pre predominant amount of the housing stock in the city was built um, that we still live in today mm -hmm. so my house is from that period the place I lived in midtowns from that period so where, where do you live now I live on Coquina Key. Coquina Key. Okay. 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 Let's, the, and we won't capture this necessarily, but let's do a point of reflection on what just happened here. Mm -hmm. So if you notice, the three things that you mentioned about the history of black folks in the city were all tragedies, um, negativities, hurts, pain. The three things you mentioned about the mainstream community were all positive, growth-oriented things. Mm -hmm that should probably change about your perspective just in general, right? And begin to look at some of the things that are parallel to that in the black community, things that have to do with development and growth and progress. Because I think too often, wouldn't you say, even our own collective memory and certainly the white community will always remember first the negatives about the community. Okay, so that's just a sidebar. Okay. Well, I agree with that, but what I will say is those are basically eye-opening events. I mean, if you look back at how these things happened, it's shocking. So, you know, like I was saying, you know, things have been skewed in favor of the white community in the city forever. So that's why you look at, you know, the housing stock, I'll say, in the 50s, it wasn't just, you know, white people getting houses back then. You know, there's plenty of houses in the black community that were built in that time period as well. I mean, like I said, my place in Midtown for one. Um, so that's not just a white community when it was, you know, the whole city really developed into its own in the 50s. Okay, so you don't live in Midtown. I lived across from Melrose Elementary until okay. last year. Okay, gotcha. Right, 1701, 13th South. So the next question, we deviated from the mayoral, we were on the mayoral candidate. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so the next one is the role model question? Yeah, okay. so who is your political role model? Living, deceased, local, national, or even international, and why? Political role model. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's a there's a couple of people I really respect, but I'm going to go off the wall again on this one. I'm going to say Ross Perot. Okay. And, <laughs> and the reason I say that is because again, he's just doing his thing, uh -huh. and it's just it's not always about a party or playing safe or by party lines. Seriously, it's not about a party, and that's the one thing. Even on a council race, it's a nonpartisan race. People keep saying, what party are you to me? You know, who are you supporting for mayor? This is a city council, and it's, it's nonpartisan. Mm -hmm. So you want to do the right thing for the sake of doing the right thing, and especially when you're looking local. The environment, the economy, public safety, these are, you know, cross a, a, a boundary uh, things. Mm -hmm. And just to tie back in, though, Ross Perot, you know, he's a guy who had a message. He went out there, he did it did not run with the mainstream party, mm -hmm. and he invested his own money because he believed that he had the answers and could do the right thing for the country. Mm -hmm. Of course, how'd that turn out? You could say not so well, but he had the most percentage of any third party candidate in, in decades. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, he was trying to change the two-party system, and I mm -hmm. respect that. Okay, which party do you most um, feel drawn to? Well, I'm a registered Republican. So, okay. but and, and do you feel uh, comfortable in your party right now? Are you kind of are you one of those Republicans that says, you know, maybe I should be an independent, or I've thought about being something else? I'll be completely honest with you. I am so busy these days. I truly don't follow, you know, day to day national mm -hmm. stuff. Nor do I care to, because the truth is. You know, if I got a problem, I'm not calling up Donald Trump and saying, yo, Don, I got a problem. Mm -hmm. I'm not calling up Hillary and saying, please help me out down here. It's local that matters the most. So the, the election that sometimes people pay the least attention to is the one that actually matters the most to them. Mm -hmm. People get so passionate for a presidential election. Hey, you're not going to be able to influence these people directly. But local, look what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. You guys got me in here, and I'm, I'm desperate to do it because I can get my name out and I can get my message out. And that's exactly, people should care most about the local stuff. Because, hey, you can actually change policy that will directly affect your life and the lives of people around you on a local scale. Okay. Next one. Last one. Um, what is the biggest financial waste you've identified in city government? Biggest financial waste. Well, 
there's a lot of them, um, and money has been thrown around in, in the wrong direction. You know, I already said this, and I got some heat for it, but when you look at just putting in stuff after the fact in the budget, right? So the pier, we had a budget for the pier. Not everybody even wanted the pier. Not everybody thought it represented or gave to the whole community. But we agreed on a budget for a pier. And now it's going over by $20, 30000000 million and saying, please, it's going to be a world-class pier if we do this. You know, but when you got a $2.5 million art uh, project or piece, $2.5 million art piece. Think about this, and seriously, if you just went to any neighborhood in the district, which, you know, the pier is in the district, and said, hey, I've got this piece of art that we'd like to get commissioned uh, for the pier. Your name will be on it. We're taking submissions. So many local artists would submit to do it for just the cost of materials, I mm -hmm. guarantee you. Mm -hmm. Because they care about their community, they represent the community, and it'd be great exposure as opposed to just giving it to, you know, name, name brand uh, artist who doesn't care. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just another check to her. Mm -hmm. So I would say that, you know, just overages, add-ons, and just, you know, runaway spending when we can save money as opposed to throwing it away on stuff that doesn't benefit everybody. Okay. All right. And I think you may be the third person who's answered. I know. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. What are you hearing from uh, constituents on that tip, by the way? Are you hearing a lot of people talk about the pier when you go around and talk to people about their concerns and their issues? People talk about the pier. People talk about the sewage system you hear every single door you mm -hmm. knock on, right? Mm -hmm. But you also hear about stuff that I appreciate that's, you know, deviates from that. Public safety. And seriously, I got into a long discussion with maybe 30 minutes about small businesses uh, uh, in Midtown, which you know was like music to my ears. I said, yeah, let's, let's talk about this. And you can tell me your ideas as opposed to just me telling you, this is what I want to do, this is how I'm going to do it. Because let's be real, I am not the answer man. I am not the guy with all the answers. I'm just wanting to be a representative because I think I can do the best job representing the people. Mm -hmm. So I am more than open to all ideas because, you know, as a council person, it's not your job to dictate policy. You're supposed to do the will of the people. Mm -hmm. So what the people want done, what you're hearing, is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm from here, and I just want to get involved and do what the people want done. And I don't think you can just say, you know, I have all the answers. I got more answers than that guy. No. Mm -hmm. You just have to be the most willing to listen. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to do, and that's what I'm trying to do. So trivia time, okay, or should we go tough question time, I'll let you call it, which one do you have? I thought those were the same thing. No, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> all right, so that means an easy trivia question then, right? No. All right, all right. <laughs> Remember trivia is extra credit. Extra credit, okay. Br bring them on. All right, so approximately, a two-part question, approximately how many African Americans in the city of St. Petersburg, and approximately how many voted in the last Primary. Primary being? The August 2013 primary. Okay. So, how many African Americans in the city? I would say, I believe it's probably about 50 to 60,000 African Americans and primary voters. Eighteen hundred. Okay, you were decently close on both counts. <laughs> we don't know if we can rate you as having answered them r correctly, mm -hmm. but you were decently close. So, on should we give them a, a correct rating or not? Come on, so give it to me. I need, it. I need <laughs> the extra credit, <laughs> please. Half point on this. One. <laughs> <laughs> so, African Americans, you're talking about fifty-eight between fifty-eight and fifty-nine thousand. I nailed that you one. You gave man. us a rank. You didn't nail it. <laughs> You 50 to 60, come on. You said 50 to 60. That's a huge variation. Okay. Fair enough. All right. How many How many people live in the city of St. Petersburg? 250. Okay. So you were closer on that answer than on this answer. So we're going to give you half a point on that one. I'll take it. I'll take okay. it. <laughs> Primary voters. I'm not going to argue. I was having my assistant email me that, and I don't have it, but we were about, there were about 6,200 total votes cast mm -hmm. in that last time. And I want to say it's around 1,600 were African American, so you were pretty close on that one. Well, thank you. Okay, got it. All right. Okay, tough question time. Oh, I thought that was it. You want to get yeah. some water? You want to get any water? 
Okay. Yeah. Throw me in the fire. Okay, because the questions have been pretty tough, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Okay. Pretty good one. Okay. So, in an informal poll of 10 African American community leaders, none of them had ever seen you or heard of you prior to this election. What did you ever do uh, in the black community prior to now? And if it's not much, why should we think that you have any concern or heart for our community? Well, that's a good question. And what I'm going to say is this, I'm not surprised that none of the black leaders know me. If you did that same poll of 10 white leaders, they don't know me either. Okay. Now why? <laughs> Nobody knows me. And why is that? No, that's the truth. Nobody knows who I am. And why is that? Okay. Well, because if you look at the people who are running against me, they have all run before or tried to set up their resume in a positive way to run. Mm -hmm. This has been a goal of theirs to run for office and to be a politician. And I'm worried a lot of people are using this as a stepping stone. I have done nothing uh, to, to pad my resume or to plan for this run other than just try and do the right thing and I've had a growing concern. So I saw the people who were getting into this race and I was terrified because they either live downtown, they're going to get a huge pay bump, or they've run for office before. I'm the only one who meets those three criteria. So, you know. It does not meet those three. It just does not meet those okay. three. So I don't live downtown. I've lived all over the district. I will not make a pay increase. I will take a pay cut. And I've not run for office before. So I'm worried about the motivations of everybody. I just hopped in this race because I've been in these communities for years doing work. So what have I done? You know, I, I'm on my neighborhood association board for Coquina Key. Good. I'm a Kona rep. Wonderful. But really what I've done is I have been in these neighborhoods and I've worked and lived among the people. So, you know, when I was in Midtown, the Times did a profile on me. They, they interviewed my neighbors. And you can say, you know, oh, he's doing, you know, fixing up things, gentrification. It's not like that. Because these are structures that are already in the community. And they've been a, the place I lived in in Midtown was abandoned for 12 years. 12 years. So let's think about that for a second. 12 years, an abandoned structure was boarded up directly across from Melrose Elementary, the worst school in Florida, a failure factory. Oh, not anymore. And in, not anymore. <laughs> See, wonderful. But let's, let's think about this. If, if 12 years, that's an entire from first grade through high school, whole cycles of children we see in this building where people are breaking in doing crime. I can't tell you how many needles and syringes I found cleaning that place up. Now Melrose, they weren't at school up until what, 2009? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they were closed for a while when they were doing their work or whatever, but you know, uh, the point being, that is not the right thing when you have kids seeing this day in and day out. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just desensitizing them to what's going on. You know, if you people say, oh, video games will desensitize you. No, seeing a bunch of crime on the corner will desensitize you. When you're walking to school, you know, back and forth every day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've, I've not done anything to try to pad myself. I've lived in these communities. I've known the people. I've lived among the people. I've fixed things up. I don't, you know go in there to make a bundle of money, but you can always renovate for cheaper than new construction. Mm -hmm. All I do is fix up, you know, boarded up, blighted, dilapidated places. I, I rented those out for six forty five a month, $645 with central AC, granite countertops, smooth top stoves, all new windows, plumbing. I mean, they're nice places. Mm -hmm. But let me go back. I, I don't know if I'll have another chance to say this, so I want to hop back mm -hmm. into one other yeah, thing. There's people, nobody's discussed this at all either during any of the debates, and it, and it concerns me. There's a, a program the city has called the Surplus Real Estate, right? And they sell, what they do is, if there's a code infraction on a property and it's, you know, forlorn or boarded up for too long, the city will lean you, lean you, lean you, and if you don't respond, they will tear your building down, scrape the lot, and then they will sell the land to anybody. So you don't have to be a nonprofit. You don't have to, anybody can buy it, and they go for between $2,500 and $7,500 a lot. Mm -hmm. That is the wrong approach. So the city's been tearing down stuff, especially in South St. Pete, for years because they were worried about, well, the code enforcement, obviously, but they said, well, people are breaking and doing the wrong things. Mm -hmm. What I said already is you can renovate for cheaper than doing new builds, plus it preserves the integrity of the different time periods of the different neighborhoods and the history of the neighborhoods. So there's no history on something that was built last week, but a place that was built 80 years ago, there's always history. And what I want to take a step back is these lots, what they're doing now, is they're selling the surplus real estate. A couple uh, firms got hip to this. They bought all of it. So mm -hmm. there was 40 lots about always, give or take, for sale. One would sell here, one would sell there. About six or eight months ago, all of them cleared out. Every single lot the city had. Mm -hmm. 
And that's because developers bought them all, mm -hmm. and they started not even building homes. They started doing them as spec houses. So we said, we've got this land, here's a floor plan, pay us two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars $250,000 and we'll build it for you. Mm -hmm. So they're not putting down any money at all, and they're pricing people out of the neighborhoods, doing actual gentrification. Plus, what's even worse is, if you're selling a lot for $2,500, the cost of the demo and the liens and the, just the, 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 the employees going out there to cite it are way higher than that. So the taxpayers are subsidizing mm -hmm. gentrification in this process. Mm -hmm. It's awful. But how do we fix that? What we can do is when there is a place that's going to be demoed, instead of scraping a lot and selling it to a private developer, keep the house, offer it to a charity for free or at a hugely reduced cost, mm -hmm. and then oversee the renovation, make sure they hit certain benchmarks. Because it is always cheaper to renovate than it is to build. Mm -hmm. And it would actually benefit the community in giving housing and preserving its character other than scraping a lot and putting some random person from out of town and wants a new house in the neighborhood. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And since you have two minutes remaining, what was wasn't it two wasn't that a two parter? Or did we did he answer? He that? answered the two parter to the uh, to the trivia question. Okay. And the other Touch. one was not a two parter per se formally. Okay. okay. And that wouldn't stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got so engrossed. I mean, <laughs> is there what can we do to do you have any curiosities or any questions we can answer about the African American? Just, you know, like I said, I, I want to try and represent everybody. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any questions. I want answers. So if people have ideas, give them to me okay. because that's all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to represent everybody and I feel like I'm the best equipped to do that because I don't represent just a pocket like downtown. Right. You know, almost half the candidates just live downtown and have been here for 10 or less years. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a deep understanding of the community if you live in one neighborhood, have only lived in one neighborhood, and have been here for less than a decade. You know, there are players in the game who have been here for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, mm -hmm. and have been fighting for things, and, you know, it's not fun for them to have to re-educate every single person. Mm -hmm. Every time somebody comes around and they want the glory. Mm -hmm. So you need, you need a baseline of understanding to move forward. And I don't have all the answers, and I don't have all the knowledge, but I certainly feel like I'm more knowledgeable than the uh, average bear, so to speak. Okay. So, um, okay. How long did you live in Midtown? This is all. I lived in Midtown from uh, 2014 mm -hmm. to last year. <laughs> and where'd you live before that? Before that, I lived in Lakewood Terrace. Lakewood Terrace. Okay. Okay. Right. So Thank that's off Six so Street. Off Six Street South. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's Corey Gibbons. Okay. We got to yep. live here. Really <laughs> oh, you were you? So I've oh, known Corey for a long time. Okay. You guys are not too far off mm -hmm. in age. Yeah. And he's what 25, I think. Yeah, he's younger than me, which, yeah. which hurts me. Yeah. Yeah, hurts younger, than, the younger than me and a, and a more powerful speaker for sure. So. Yeah, <laughs> like, he, like you said before, you know, people have been um, doing this with it in mind. I mean, I think he was probably five years old and he knew what he wanted to do. <laughs> he, he's been angling for a while. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just truly, right. yeah. I was just trying to, I saw what was going on, the people were wondering about the motivation, and I just want to hop in and see if I could help because you know, I really do have a vested interest in care because I'm from here. Mm -hmm. So the city's given me a lot, and I want to give back and also share it with people who are moving here now, and also help those who don't always have a voice to have a voice, mm -hmm. and hopefully benefit from what is, I know we're up for time, but it is a boom time mm -hmm. for people, and who is benefiting from this boom? Well, a lot of these construction companies aren't even based locally. So now the last boom we had, who, who benefited from that? You know, everybody got into their... General Home Development House. <laughs> well, know. in general, the last boom benefited nobody uh -huh. because all the people who were building ended up going bust too. It was half finished projects. I mean, you know, even the signature building got foreclosed. They sold them all off for pennies. So nobody really benefited in the last boom. And I think certainly it'd be nice to see some people from the city benefit during this one. Uh -huh. um, the only people who benefited from the last boom are ones who bought condos. They cut rates and now their property values have gone up. Uh -huh. So. I'd say the private investors are the only ones who go through the last one. Now I have a personal question. If you buy a lot, I see a lot um, like the um, people lose land oh, the, I'm from sure that many taxes. Do you want to build a home? Do they uh, forgive those liens or are you stuck in there? It depends on how you got the lot. So if you buy the lot from the city, mm -hmm. it's Do you get by city lot? 
<laughs> Nobody mean, knows about those. County lot. No, that's you're talking about tax sales, and those right. those are messy because they have a lot of lean. I bought mortgages. two lots that way in the last. When the boom was picking up, I bought some, and they had liens on them. And um, anyway. the city did not forgive all of them. You can apply for lien forgiveness, but you're not always granted it. Right, because I, we hadn't planned to bill right then. Bingo. So um, they're like, well, when you bill, we'll, you know, but of course the liens will pay off our time. See, this is what scared me, though, is literally the fact that nobody knows that there's been a program this? called yep. Surplus. Okay. Nobody knows that there's a program done. called Surplus Real Estate. Uh -huh in the city of St. Petersburg, where they literally just have a list of their lots for sale. Mm -hmm. It's online, they update it once a month, and it went from always 40, all throughout the district, to now none, mm -hmm. or one or two. Wow. And that, and now you've seen the rise, right as those all went away, the rise of the people building mm -hmm. spec homes, uh, a lot of them in Midtown. So one perfect example, there was a lot, don't get me caught up in the details, but it was maybe $3,500. Mm -hmm. I said, man, that's that's a that's a good price, and it's right behind uh, John Hopkins. And that, that's not a bad neighborhood. It was right off Ninth mm -hmm. and, and, and twenty twenty first, I think. I saw the lot later on the internet, a rendering of a home for I think one hundred ninety thousand wow. dollars, and it said home not built, uh, but if you put X down, we'll build it for you. So they're not putting any money up, mm -hmm. and they're just building these spec homes that it's nobody in the neighborhood is going to benefit from. Right. Okay, and it's called City... What? Sur well, you can just literally go on the internet. It's through the city website, mm -hmm. but Surplus Real Estate. City of St. Pete, Surplus Real Estate. Now, they forgive, forgive liens, or...? This is city-owned land, so they've already cleared the lots. These are just vacant lots they're sitting on. Oh, wow. Yeah. From all the houses that they knocked down. For all the houses they knocked down for codes. Uh -huh. But I don't think they should be knocking the houses down, period. I think they should be giving those to a charity or subsidizing them for an individual who, if they meet certain benchmarks in the renovation... Mm -hmm. Can have the home for the same because if you're selling a lot for 2500 and you're demoing it i mean demo I mean, costs five ten thousand at least you know five if not then go up to 20. Mm -hmm. wow. so we're losing money let's keep the structure mm -hmm. give it to somebody you can always renovate for cheaper give it to an individual yeah. or charity the berg votes up close and personal interviews with the candidates hatred's never okay discrimination is never okay black people get get felony convictions for things white people don't even get arrested for so they're not just gonna say that they're needy we have the worst leadership in this county. This is all very new to me. Nobody can tell me who I can support and who I can't support. Downtown, the biggest issue is parking. When I'm in Midtown, the issue is jobs. How do you support our businesses? And the unique challenges that face this district and the kind of the question about Midtown and Downtown. Gentrification is, you know, pushing the people out of their community by any means necessary. Half the candidates just live downtown. They haven't done much for the um, African American community. The guiding principle of the administration would be reparations and economic development. You've heard the news reports. Now hear from the candidates. The Berg votes.